Hello, welcome to this video. Now I'm the creator and founder of Walk Active and in this video I'm talking about footwear. Specifically, how do you choose the right pair of shoes when you start out on your Walk Active journey? Now this is a really, really popular question. I get asked this a lot. So what I'm trying to do in this video is actually outline to you four key considerations for features that are important or for you to look out for. Maybe apply that to your existing shoe wardrobe and see if you can find those features. And those features are really gonna help you learn and put Walk Active into your body. And then the second part of the video, I've actually got a selection of different shoes here that are currently available on the market, uh, bearing in mind that we are in the coronavirus pandemic um, but there's a selection of different shoes here and I'm going to relate to the features and so if you are thinking about buying a pair of shoes these are some of the things that you might want to look at okay so let's take it right back to the beginning and think about with your foot with walk active um, the actual basic walk active technique relates to four parts of the body it relates to your feet it relates to your hips your head and your shoulders and your arms and specifically with your feet um, as you start to put the the task of walk active into your feet you're going to stop having a passive foot when the foot sort of acts as one unit and you're going to start to have an active foot and an open ankle now an active foot means that wherever you've got a joint in your foot like we have in our hands you have the ability to have movement and whilst you're also trying to have an open ankle with your foot that means when you peel off the back foot you're going to press into big toe middle toe middle toe feel the breadth of your foot and that's going to allow you to have a lot more movement in the ankle which is what we call the open ankle and at the same time it's going to allow you to have a little bit more movement of the hip now those key factors are important because having more mobility in the ankle joint peeling through the foot with an active foot and getting a bit more movement in the hip joint will actually significantly reduce the pressure on your knees and the walk active technique and system has been statistically shown to um, through the scientific research to improve your posture and importantly reduce the strain at the knee and at the ankle so your choice of footwear can actually have quite a direct impact on how well and how easily you can apply the task of the feet into the part, first part of the capture technique, okay? So the first consideration to think about is actually having a shoe that's got a nice wide toe box. And having a wide toe box is actually quite important because when you start to use your feet properly with Walk Active, you'll find that your actual ball of the foot and the foot will actually spread. So if you have a narrow shoe, it's actually harder to feel that you've got that natural spreading of the shoes that will feel comfortable and then also importantly as you come through the foot and you're able to push off your big toe middle toe and little toe so having a wider toe box is a really lovely feature to be thinking about and in my experience makes a real difference to your comfort of your foot but also to be able to feel how the foot actually spreads so a wider toe box. The second thing that I'd encourage you to think about is having a squarer toe box. I'm just gonna pick out one of these shoes here. So you've got a squarer toe box and a wider toe box, but here at the front, that's what I mean, a squarer toe box. So that when you actually come through your foot, um, as opposed to maybe a running shoe, which has more of a tapered shoe, like this one, where this kind of encourages you maybe more to come through onto maybe one side of the foot, or maybe like more of the a kind of a big toe push off. When you have a squarer toe box, it actually allows you to have more of an even push off big toe, middle toe, and little toe. And again, that helps with the alignment of the foot, but also opening up the hips. So when you have the correct tracking from the foot, going up into the knee into the hip it's almost like your leg is a paddle so if you imagine this is my river and i'm sitting on a canoe i put my paddle in and it's an even push away through so as i peel that back foot off the ground it's an even push off big toe little toe little toe so having a square or toe box is beneficial to help that correct tracking from the foot going into the knee and then obviously into the hip so you've got a wider um, shoe box and a square toe box. So those are two features to begin with first of all. The third feature that I'd really um, get you to think about is actually the heel counter. So 
you want to have a little bit of stability in the ankle um, so that your, your foot feels stable on the ground and sometimes if you have a shoe that is too loose at the back you can find that when the foot comes down it will encourage more movement at the actual ankle joint so generally you have about a four degree movement from the Achilles going to that point of strike and if you have a little bit more than that that can sometimes create um, challenges and difficulties and misalignment going from the foot going up into the back of the leg. So to have some kind of footwear that gives you an element of heel counter stability, in my opinion, and experience as walk active is really, really beneficial. Okay, so wider toe box, square toe box, and having a little bit of stability in the ankle. And the fourth feature that I think is really important is actually having a flexible sole, a flexible sole. So what I mean by this, so this is really fairly flexible, okay, like that. Compare that to a tennis shoe, which is pretty inflexible, okay? Now, in my experience, again, all of everything that I'm sharing with you is my experience as a creator and founder of Walk Active. Um, I've had lots of clients who would maybe come to maybe our live events, um, or maybe they're actually following the online programs, and they're trying to do it with a tennis shoe. And because this is stiffer, what happens as you try to fulfill the two objects of the foot of having an active foot and an open ankle, you or an individual can try to almost claw the foot. You find yourself kind of bracing the foot, trying to make the foot be more flexible when the actual shoe is restricting that. And when that happens, if you'd like to do this with me, if you actually start to claw your foot, um, maybe you make a fist, you make a fist with me now. If you make a fist and you feel your forearm, you'll feel that the muscles in the forearm become really tight. And the similar things happens with your foot. So if you're trying to make the foot become more active than maybe the shoe allows, then the foot becomes tense and then the muscles up the front of the shin can become you know, tense as well. And that can often lead to discomfort. And if it goes on for a long period of time, it can almost feel like it's a sort of like a, a, a sort of shin spin plane. So you don't want to have any of that. A flexible sole is really beneficial in, in that sense to feel how your foot can really have act, active movement and you're really stimulating the joints through every single aspect of the foot. And if you really had to sort of highlight of those four considerations what's the most important, I personally think having a flexible sole is really, really important. So those are your four things, wide toe box, square toe box, um, having a little bit of stability in the ankle counter and also thinking about a flexible sole. So have a little look at this stage before you go anywhere. What have you got actually in your own shoe wardrobe? So you might have a kind of a running style shoe and in that sense you have a look at it because you may find that it's more pointed and more tapered rather than that square box and sometimes some of them can be a bit more narrow because they're geared towards a narrow foot and also you may find that you've got a bit of flex here in the forefoot but maybe not so much at the back of the foot and lots of them really give you good stability around the ankle joint so just have a little look at that see how you get on um, but I would deter you against a tennis shoe in my experience that really is one of the quickest ways to feel that you get um, discomfort in the foot and and you feel it harder to really get that foot leaving behind as you propel and start to use all the posterior chain muscles okay so those are your four key considerations now what I've got here in front of me and I'll share with you is at this moment of filming so we're at June 2020 obviously global uh, corona pandemic so it's what's available and I'm just going to show you some of the things that I've pulled um, and you can have a have a little thought, think for yourself. So if you are thinking about investing in your shoes, um, take into account of those four considerations, but really you don't need to buy shoes if you feel that you've got footwear in your wardrobe that covers those four considerations. However, what I'm gonna start with is the Vivo Barefoot range. Now, the Vivo Barefoot range are kind of, their whole thing is about minimal, um, you know, uh, thickness. So you're really close to the ground, so you enhance the proprioception, enhance the whole sensitivity of the foot and the shoe. And they're really super flexible. You've got the, all these key features. You've got a wide toe box, you've got your square toe box, you've got some stability around the ankle joint. Um, they look great. They can be really, really super comfy. And I have a lot of clients who really like them. Um, I have a couple of reservations about them. If you are completely new to walk active, or maybe you're new to exercise, or you feel that maybe the foot that you have is maybe not as mobile or as fit 
or as strong as it could be because pretty much the Vivo Barefoot, whilst it will enhance and help your foot to become fitter and stronger longer term, it's quite purist. There's not much forgive in there. So um, that would just be something I'd get you to have a think about if, if you're thinking, right, I'm gonna go straight for this kind of shoe. The other reservation I have about this particular one is because the way they've done the lacing, which looks really great, um, there's not a great deal of range of motion to be able to get your foot into that and actual fact I personally can't get my foot into to this style of lacing I love the look of it but I find it really quite difficult to get my foot into that style of lacing okay so that is a Vivo Barefoot Primus Trail super light neutral drop all the way through you're going to be really really close to the ground you've got lots of sensitivity but it's quite purist and I would encourage you if you're new have a little think about whether that's going to be the right thing for your first shoe out on your walk out journey okay now moving along this is also viva barefoot this is a primus uh, knit um as you can see it's had a little bit of wear because it came and i really really liked it and i bought all these shoes so i have no relationship with any of these footwear companies at all it's just my personal experience um, of what i think would be helpful on your walk out journey i really really like these i am um, i'm using these more as my commute to work my urban shoe super flexible so just have a little look at this how flexible that is i can do that with it okay so i'm using this more as a lifestyle shoe as opposed to my training uh, workout walk active shoe i really like it you've got a wider toe box square toe box i've got a little bit of ankle stability there but again i've got that neutral drop and it's super flexible so that's how i'm personally using it but i would still have the same reservations if you feel that uh, you're new on your walk active journey and maybe your feet need a little bit more stability and support okay so moving on, on that um, note, I'm going to be talking now about the Merrell shoe. Now the Merrells, what I quite like about Merrell is they tend to have a little bit of a directory, so to speak, of barefoot thickness. So all of these three that I'm going to show you have got an, a zero drop. This is actually a Merrell Bare Access XTR. Gosh, all these names, hey? A Merrell Bare Access XTR. And this actually has a 17 millimeter um, stack but it's still got a zero drop all the way through. So it's giving you a lot more stability. You've got your wider toe box, square toe box. I've got my ankle stability, but I really like, and I've got clients who have this shoe and they really um, enjoy it. For those clients who feel that they may need a little bit more stability and not feeling you're quite so close to the ground, just have a look at there. It's not quite so flexible, but if you feel that you need a bit more support, and it's also giving you a little bit of uh, support here in the arch, which can be very beneficial for some people, this could be the right shoe for you. So have a look, look, little look at that one. So that's a Merrell Bear X Access XTR, and obviously all of these come in men and women's and come in a variety of colors, but at this moment in time, this seems quite bright and breezy so that's that one further along the line this is a trail glove five okay so it's a minimalist training shoe it's a zero drop all the way through but this time the stack is 11.5 millimeters okay this was 17.5 this is 11.5 and just notice that i've got a lot more flexibility in this one compared to this one but I've still got the features of having a nice wide toe box square box having a bit of stability in the ankle joint and I've got that lovely flexibility currently this is my shoe of choice that I'm wear wearing when I'm doing my own personal walk active training um, when I'm actually doing my own walk active workouts and when I'm actually teaching and I'm using footwear this is one that I'm using right now I like it because I feel I've got a little bit of stability but I've still got all that lovely sensory so this is the one that I I'm currently wearing okay now it's really super light so that's 170 grams just for half the shoe okay now moving a bit further along the line on the Merrell this is the Vapor Glove 4 now have a little look at this this is super 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 flexible okay so it's quite comparative to oops, the, the, the Vivo Primus Knit um, for me personally uh, just ignore the colour whether you love or like it. So you've got wider toe box, square toe box, got some stability at the ankle, and you've got a super flexible sole. Um, for me personally, this is just a little bit too pure, so I am actually more comfortable with this. But again, you may prefer that. Um, I would suggest this is someone who's already got, uh, this would suit someone who's already got a fit and a strong foot and really already using 
barefoot um, shoes, possibly your runner, and you want to see how walk out can really complement your training. This may be more something uh, that's suitable for you. But have a little, have a little look. It's really, really light, and that's a Vapor Glove Four. But again, in my opinion, when you're starting out and walk active, that's pretty purist, and you've got to have quite a fit and a strong foot to um, make that work for you. Okay, so those are the Merrells. Again, you've got a nice little range of those. The, these next shoes are kind of new kids on the block. This is an Ultra shoe, okay? This is the Ultra Lone Ranger. Um, it might be suitable if you are tracking, you know, you like trekking or trailing, sort of hiking, so you've got lots of good tre tread there. So why the reason I've picked this one out is you've got a wider toe box, square a toe box and you've got the ankle stability however what you are losing out on is actually the flexibility you've got flexibility in the ball of the foot but actually less coming through here um, so that's the lone ranger but this is the ultra escalante so again as you can see i've worn these i like these these are thicker so you get a little bit more support. So if you're looking for something that is a wide toe box and a square toe box with your ankle stability, but you feel that you need a little bit more support, this might be the right shoe for you. And I've had lots of participants who've actually graduated from starting their walk active journey on like a running shoe. And they've gone from that to this exact shoe and really found it beneficial to how the walkout technique goes into the body and they've really really enjoyed it um, it's a little bit more comfortable a little bit more stability so have a little look at that check those out that's an ultra shoe and i'll put all of these underneath the post as well so you can check them out now the last one i just wanted to feature was a sketches shoe now sketches have done brilliantly in terms of their go walk range and encouraging people to sort of you know go out and be more active However, if you are new to walk active, I just have a couple of reservations for this. Um, you have a little bit of ankle stability, but it's quite flexible there. And the toe box is more tapered. It can be a little bit squarer, but my reservation mainly with this is actually the memory foam. The memory foam is the feature and they call it, I think, let's just check here. They call it the air cooler and uh, the ultra go cushioning. So it can be really, really comfortable. However, because it's so comfortable, it's almost like your foot is on a lilo. There is so much movement there. In my experience, when I've had um, clients who've come away on my res residential retreats, when they've actually brought this as their training shoe, it's almost like you are trying to do walk active on a bed of jelly. And that's a little bit harder to enhance the correct tracking and how you really want the biomechanics of the foot to work with having an active foot and an open ankle, the first part of the walk out technique. So they can be really comfortable, but I would just kind of err on a side of have a little think, see what else you've got in your wardrobe. And if you do want to think about other things, maybe um, sketches is something to move away from okay um, so I hope you have found this useful just to recap the four considerations you want to have a wider toe box square toe box flexible sole and a little bit of stability around the ankle joint and those are the four key features which allow you to fulfill the key objective of the foot so you want to have an active foot and an open ankle and actually by applying that first part of the walkout technique with the scientific studies have shown that the walkout technique actually significantly improves your uh, posture and it also significantly reduces the joint strain at the knee and the ankle so i hope you have found that helpful please leave me a comment below i'd love to hear your thoughts it's a real hot topic about what are the right shoe is it for me you want to be comfortable you want to feel that like your feet can move and your feet can breathe um, so as you start out on your walk active journey enjoy it have a little look leave me a comment below and i really look forward to hearing how you get on as you start walk active take care lovely people and i hope to see you again very soon bye bye